National security correspondent for the New York Times, David Sanger, called the retaliatory measures the strongest American response yet to a state-sponsored cyber attack from Washington. David, thanks for being with us. I want to get to this uh, response from President Putin because he has just announced he's deciding not to expel U.S. diplomats. And in fact, in the statement he released, he goes on to invite all American children of U.S. diplomats in Russia to New Year and Christmas tree celebrations in the Kremlin. What do you make of Putin's response to these U.S. actions? You know, um, President Putin has played a pretty weak hand pretty brilliantly throughout this entire thing. He's denied having much to do with the hacking, then said focus on the content of the emails, who cares where they came from. And now, in response to the, uh, the jettisoning of 35 Russian diplomats, he's basically saying, you know, that was President Obama. I'm just moving on. I'm waiting for Donald Trump. And if you read down in the end of that statement, he wishes President Obama a good New Year's and then says he's looking forward to working with Mr. Trump. So the message of this whole thing, right down to inviting the kids to the uh, New Year's celebration, is uh, Putin saying, I'm going to develop a completely new relationship with a new president, which fits in very well with what Donald Trump has been saying all along. So uh, it's a way for him to basically ignore that most of this has even happened. So what is Donald Trump's political options now? He says he will listen to what the intelligence community has to say next week when he meets with them. But publicly, he's always put doubt onto any link uh, from the Russians uh, to influencing the U.S. election. Now that these sanctions are in place, diplomats have been expelled um, and more, what position will he be in um, come inauguration, considering some Republicans have been supportive of these moves? Well, I read his statement last night as trying to sort of edge away bit by bit from his fairly dismissive attitude that this happened at all or that it could have been done by a 400-pound hacker on their bed in New Jersey or something like that. So uh, I think he's, uh, in, in taking the intelligence report, which is a, a, a good thing to do, I think he's saying, I'm now going to root myself back in the facts and from there make a decision. But I think the president has, President Obama, has boxed in the president-elect to some degree because it would be hard to imagine, especially with Republicans calling for investigations into the Russian activity, how President-elect uh, Trump could take the oath of office and then immediately begin to undo some of these sanctions that uh, were announced yesterday. On the other hand, when my colleague Maggie Haberman and I interviewed uh, Mr. Trump in July, uh, just before uh, his speech at the Republican National Convention, he talked at some length about how he was not persuaded by the sanctions imposed against Russia for uh, Ukraine for uh, its annexation of Crimea. So you could see him begin to back away from those as well. And considering that there's criticism of the Obama administration that they took these steps too uh, late, that Democrats in general were um, weak in protecting themselves against such an attack, do you think that this response will be enough to deter cyber warfare from other countries or deter Russia at all, considering Trump will be the new president? I doubt that they will uh, prove to be effective deterrents, but they may incrementally move in that direction. We've seen a little bit of a diminishment of Chinese activity since President Obama threatened some action and reached an agreement with Xi Jinping about a year and a half ago. Uh, could be the same here. But the fact of the matter is that cyber is just too cheap, too hard to trace back for it to be resistible to a country that wants to be able to conduct influence operations but not go over that threshold that could res result in an armed response. David Sanger, national security correspondent for The New York Times. Be sure to check out his article on this story today. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Errol.